All right, in this presentation, we're going to continue looking at division of whole numbers. We're going to look at sections. This is going to come from section 1.6, where we're going to talk about dividing by more than one digit. So our procedure is still the same. The only thing that's going to change is our step two. You're not going to know, you probably don't know your multiplication tables when we get to two digit numbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to round the dividend and the divisor. We'll look at this more in the next section, but for here, we're going to kind of simplify it. If the digit to the right is five or more, we want to round up. If the digit to the right is less than five, we're going to round down. We're going to use this to kind of come up with an estimation. Now the other thing we want to be very careful about in this section is check our divisions. Can we subtract? And is, is the result smaller than the divisor? So let's go ahead and jump into some examples. So for example A, we have 3066 divided by 42. My 3,066 is going to go inside. My 42 will go on the outside. We want to go ahead and divide. So what can I divide? The first number that I can divide by 42 is going to be all the way to the 306. So this is what we want to look at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to round my 42 down to 40. 2 is smaller than 5. So I'm going to round down to 40. My 306, I'm going to round it up to 310. And what we're going to do is we're going to ignore these zeros on the end and we're going to divide 31 by 4. 4 goes into 31 7 times. So we want to multiply 42 times 7. 7 times 2 is 14. We carry the 1. 7 times 4 is 28, plus 1 is 29. I'm going to bring that over to my division problem. 6 minus 4 is 2. 30 minus 29 is 1. So we can subtract, and now my subtraction is smaller than 42, so this is correct. So the next thing we do is we bring down our 6. So same idea. I want to divide 126 by 42. I'm going to round 126 up to 130. I'm going to round 42 down to 40. We ignore those last digits. And we want to divide 13 by 4. 4 goes into 13 three times. And if we multiply 42 times 3, we get 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 4 is 12. So we get 126. We can subtract. The result of our subtraction is smaller than what we divided by, and in fact it divides evenly. So this answer is going to be 73. All right, let's look at example B. Example B, we're going to put our top number inside. We're going to put our bottom number outside. The first number that I can divide by 28 is 229. I'm going to go ahead and round. 
229. Since the 9 is bigger than 5, we're going to round up to 230. Same thing with our 28. 8 is bigger than 5, so we're going to round up to 30. We're going to ignore those last digits, and I want to know how many times does 3 go into 23. It goes in 7 times. If we go ahead and multiply this, seven times eight is 56. Seven times two is 14, plus five is 19. So we bring over our 196 and we subtract. Can I subtract? The answer is yes. Let's see what happens when we do subtract. We get 9 minus 6 is 3. 22 minus 19 is also 3. Now here, if we look at this, note that 33 is bigger than 28. This tells me that I did something wrong. 7 is too small. So I want to go ahead and change it. I'm going to increase my 7 to an 8. We want to multiply 28 times 8. 8 times 8 is 64. 8 times 2 is 16. And 16 plus 6 is 22. We subtract, we get 5. Bring down our 6. Same thing again. I wanted to divide 56 by 28. We're going to go ahead and round 56. 6 is bigger than 5, so I'm going to round up to 60. 8 is bigger than 5. I'm going to round 38, 28 up to 30. We ignore our last digits, and I want to know what is 6 divided by 3. The answer is 2. So we want to go ahead and multiply 28 times 2. 2 times 8 is 16. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 56. So we bring it over. Can I subtract? The answer is yes. When we subtract, we get 0. So this also divides evenly. We get 82. All right, last example. We have 2697 divided by 93. I'm going to put my top number inside, my bottom number outside. So the first number that I can divide by 93 is 269. If we go ahead and round this, we get 269 rounds up to 270, 93 rounds down to 90. So how many times does 90 or does 9 go into 27? It should go in 3 times. If we go ahead and multiply, 93 times 3, we get 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 9 is 27. So we get 279. Can I subtract? The answer is no. Remember with subtraction, larger number always needs to be on top. So this means that I went too big. I want to back it up. 
instead of three, I want to go with two. So if we go ahead and multiply 93 times two, we get two times three is six, two times nine is 18, we get 186. We go ahead and subtract, we get nine minus six is three, 26 minus 18 is eight, we bring down our seven. So same thing, I want to divide 837 by 93. I'm going to round up, so I'm gonna make the 837, I'm gonna round it up to 840. I'm gonna round the 93 down and make it a 90. So how many times does nine go into 84? The answer is nine. If we go ahead and multiply 93 times nine, we get three times nine is 27. Nine times nine is 81, and 81 plus two is 83. We can subtract. We subtract, we get zero. This divides evenly. All right, so that takes care of our basic division examples for dividing by um, more than one digit. So now let's go ahead and look at some special cases. Okay, so now we're going to talk about long division with zeros in the quotient. We're still going to go ahead and um, use our same rules that we've been looking at so far. The main difference we're going to take is the second step is going to be a bit of a shortcut. If the dividend, the number we're dividing into, is smaller than the divisor, the number we're dividing by, we can put a zero in the quotient and just bring down the next digit. Note, we do not need to perform the multiplication and subtraction step. Or basically, if we multiply by zero, we get zero. If we subtract by zero, we still get the same number as before. And so um, it kind of makes it a little bit easier just to go ahead and bring down the next digit. But the main thing is, is that you do need to remember to put a zero in the quotient in your answer. Okay, so let's look at some examples. Example A, we have 7,068 divided by 34. So 7068 is going to go inside. We're going to divide by 34. All right, so if we go ahead and do this, same thing that we were doing on the last slide. I want to divide 70 by 34. We want to round, so I want to actually be thinking 70 divided by 30. How many times does 3 go into 7? The answer is 2. I'm going to put a 2 above the last digit that I'm working with, or the 0, and then I want to multiply. 34 times 2, we get 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 3 is 6. Subtract, we get 2, we bring down the 6. Now this is where we're what we're talking about now. 26 is smaller than 34. But the thing is, once you start bringing down digits, you always have to divide, multiply, etc., etc., unless it's a zero. So I bring down my digit. I need to answer the question, how many times does 34 go into 26? 34 goes into 26 
zero times. Now, as I said, with zero, I do not have to multiply. I do not have to subtract. This is the one instance where we can go ahead and just bring down our next digit. So now we bring down our next digit, and I want to know what is 268 divided by 34. So we still do our rounding. 268, I'm going to round that up to 270. 34, I'm going to round that down to 30. We cancel our last digits and we divide. 3 goes into 27 9 times. So let's go ahead and multiply. If we go ahead and multiply this, 34 times 9, we get 9 times 4 is 36. 9 times 3 is 27, plus 3 is 30. We get 306. But we do have an issue. We can't subtract, so I actually went too big. I'm going to back it off. Instead of 9, I'm going to go with an 8. So if we go ahead and multiply 34 times 8, We get 8 times 4 is 32, 8 times 3 is 24, plus 3 is 27. Even that is too big. 272 is bigger than 268. So again, I need to back it off. and make it a 7. Okay, let's go ahead and multiply again. 34 times 7. I get 7 times 4 is 28. 7 times 3 is 21. Plus 2 is 23. Can I subtract? And the answer is yes. We subtract and we get a remainder of 30. All right, let's go ahead and try a couple more. Let's try 1823 divided by 17. 1823 goes inside, 17 goes outside. The first number I can divide by 17 is 18. I'm not going to do my rounding trick on here because 17 is very close to 18. I know it goes in once. If we go ahead and multiply 1 times 17, we get 17. Subtract, we get 1. We bring down our 2. How many times does 17 go into 12? The answer is 0. I'm not going to multiply. I'm not going to subtract. I'm just going to go ahead and bring down my next digit. Now I need to know how many times does 17 go into 123. We do need to go ahead and think about this one. So I'm going to go ahead and round. I'm going to round my 123 down to 120. I'm going to round my 17 up to 20. Now I want to know how many times does 2 go into 12. The answer is 6. So if we go ahead and multiply this, we get 6 times 17. 6 times 7 is 42. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 4 is 10. If 
we subtract, we get 21. That is too big for 17, and so that means I did not go big enough. So instead of 6, I want to use 7. So 17 times 7. 7 times 7 is 49. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 4 is 11. So we get 119. Subtract 123 minus 119, or 23 minus 19 is 4. Let's try one more, just to make sure that we have it. So we want to divide 15, 933. Okay, so we go ahead and start with our division. And the first number I want to look at is 159 divided by 39. So we want to round up. This becomes 160. 39 becomes 40. 4 goes into 16 four times. If we go ahead and multiply now, we get 4 times 9 is 36. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 3 is 156. If we subtract, we get 3. Bring down our next digit. We get 39 goes into 33 zero times. So we bring down our next digit. We want to divide 333 by 39. If we do this, we get 330. We're going to round to get rid of one digit. We round 39 to 40. 4 goes into 33 eight times. So now if we multiply 39 times 8, we get 8 times 9 is 72. 8 times 3 is 24 and 24 plus 7 is 31. This is smaller than 333, so we can't subtract, and if we subtract we get 3 minus 2 is 1, and 3 minus 1 is 2. This is smaller than 39, so we did our division correctly and we have a remainder of 21. All right, so that takes care of long division with zeros in the quotient. All right, so the next thing that we want to look at is dividing numbers ending in zeros. So what we're going to do is before we even set up our division problem, we want to cancel the same number of zeros from both numbers. After that, we will use the rules for long division with these new numbers. So let's go ahead and see what I mean by that. For example A, I want to cancel the same number of zeros in each one of these. Um, we're going to do it one at a time. So for instance, I can cancel these zeros, and I can cancel these zeros. The third zero in the first number does not have a zero to cancel out with, so we have to leave it there. So now we can go ahead and instead of dividing by 400, the problem that we want to look at is 110 divided by 4. So we can go ahead and divide this. 4 goes into 11 two times. 
2 times 4 is 8. Subtract, we get 3. We bring down our 0. 4 goes into 30. 7 times. 7 times 4 is 28. Subtract, we get 2. So our final answer is 27 with a remainder of 2. Let's go ahead and try one more. Example B. Same thing, I don't want to divide by 130. I'm going to start by canceling zeros. So what I actually want to divide is 13104 by 13. So the first number that I can divide by 13 is 13. 13 goes into 13 one time. 1 times 13 is 13. Subtract, we get 0. We bring down a 1. How many times does 13 go into 1? The answer is 0. I bring down my next digit. How many times does 13 go into 10? Again, the answer is 0. So I bring down my next digit. And now we have to actually do some computations. So if we look at 104 divided by 13, if we go ahead and round this, 100, 104 is going to round down to 100. Sorry. 13 also rounds down rounds down to 10. Now unfortunately, 100 divided by 10, I can't do that. Um, that's equal to 10, and we can't have a two-digit number in our answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go smaller. I'm going to make it a 9. All right, let's see what happens if we do this. We get 9 times 13. 9 times 3 is 27. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 2 is 11. And if we try that, um, this is actually still too big. I need to back it off a little bit more. So instead of 9, I want to go with 8. If we do this, 13 times 8, get 8 times 3 is 24, 8 times 1 is 8, and 8 plus 2 is 10. I can subtract, and when I subtract I get 0. So my final answer is 1008. All right, that takes care of dividing by numbers ending in zeros. You can take this shortcut to help you out. The last thing we want to look at is an application problem. So it says a consultant charged $30,375 for evaluating a school's compliance with the Americans with Disability Act. If the consultant worked 225 hours, find the rate charged per hour. So um, what we have here is notice that we have that word per. That implies this is a multiplication or a division problem. Since we are being asked to find how many times, note that we worked 225 hours, and we charged a total of 30,375. We are given a total, that implies this is a division problem. So let's go ahead and see what we can do here. I'm going to put my total inside. And I want to divide by 225. Now we haven't divided by three digit numbers. 
but it's going to be very similar to what we did when we divided two digit numbers. So the first thing is, what's the first number I can divide by 225? The answer is 303. Now I want to round it so that um, I'm dividing by essentially one digit. So 225, I actually want to round this down to 200. We're going to be looking at the 2 to decide whether it rounds up or down. 303, same idea. I want to look at the 0. I'm going to look at the same digit in my other number as well. This tells me to round down. To 300. Now what we're going to do is we're going to ignore the last two digits. So three goes in or two goes into three one time. One times 225 is 225. And we can subtract. Now as these get more complicated, um, I'm going to take my subtraction over to the side just so that my division problem doesn't get all messy. So I'm going to borrow from the 3, becomes a 2. 0 becomes a 10, and then becomes a 9. 3 becomes a 13. 13 minus 5 is 8. 9 minus 2 is 7. And 2 minus 2 is 0. So we do get 78. I'm going to bring down my 7. Now I want to know how many times does 225 go into 787. So again I'm going to round my 225 to 200. My 787 I'm going to round it up to 800. This goes in four times. Now, four times 200 is 800, which means that four times 225 is going to be even larger. So four is actually too big. I want to back it off, and I want to make it a three. If we go ahead and multiply 225 times three, I get 3 times 5 is 15, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7, and 3 times 2 is 6, so we get 6, 75. There's no borrowing on this one, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract. 7 minus 5 is 2, 8 minus 7 is 1, 7 minus 6 is 1. All right, we bring down our next digit. So same thing. I want to divide by 225. I want to round my 225 to 200 again. And I'm going to round my 1125 to 1100. We ignore our last two digits. 2 goes into 11 five times. So if we multiply by 5, we get 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 2 is 12. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11. Subtract, we get 0. We still need to include our correct units. And so remember that this is find the rate charged per hour. 
So this is $135 per hour. All right, that takes care of division. Um, so go ahead and work on the homework now. That should get you through a point five. All right, the next thing, this is gonna be the last of our major computation section. Um, it's gonna get a little bit easier from here. In terms of computations, the next couple things that we're gonna look at is rounding and um, order of operations. And those will all be fairly simple in terms of the computations. Okay, so go ahead, work on your homework. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me.